In this tips and tricks video, we're going to cover how to add an inline call to action to your WordPress pages or posts. Here we are on our sample website, and we should probably explain a little bit about what an inline call to action is first. We actually have one in this blog article already. Let me highlight it for you. So basically, an inline call to action is a call to action that you place in line with the text. And a call to action, of course, is where we want someone who's a visitor to our site to take some kind of action that we would like them to make. Typically, if you're a business website, this would mean either taking them to a sales page or some kind of special offer or something that puts them in the sales funnel. And in this case, an inline call to action really needs to sort of stand out from the rest of the text that's on the page. And you can see that with the one we have here, it's standing out a little bit. It definitely helps that it's all bold text compared to what's around it. But there is actually a way that you can do this a little bit better. And we're going to accomplish that using one plugin and the tools that are already built into WordPress. Here we are in the dashboard of our WordPress site. And the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to the plugins area of main navigation and click on add new to add a new plugin. Now the name of the plugin we're going to be installing is called MCE Table Buttons. This is a plugin that puts buttons in your visual editor and it basically allows you to add a table to your pages or your posts. We can see that in our search it's the first result that we're returned. So let's go ahead and click on install now. I'm going to say OK to install this plugin. And on the next page just make sure to activate the plugin. And that's all you need to do. Now let's go back to the actual blog post that we'd like to edit. And since we're logged in already, we can see that in the admin bar, there's a link to edit this post. A nice shortcut takes us right to the article itself, so we don't have to dig around and find it in the dashboard. And let's go ahead and click here to sort of expand our view a little bit so we can see more of the actual text editor itself. You'll notice that here in the visual editor, there's a third row of icons that's been added. This is from the plugin itself, and it allows you to insert a table, as well as make some modifications to the rows and columns that you have in it. Now, you might ask, why are we going to use a table? In fact, we really are just going to cheat a bit, and we're going to use this table to create a simple box that we're going to place our inline call to action inside of, just to make it stand out a bit. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to copy our text. We're actually going to reinsert this in a little bit, so we're just going to save it to our clipboard, and then we're going to delete it from the blog post. And then we're going to go ahead and create one return space, which we're going to insert our column into. This is where our inline call to action is going to be found. And once we've done that, all you need to do is click on the Insert Table button of the new MCE editor we added, and you get this pop-up window. Now, as I said, we're not going to be actually creating a table. We're just going to use this to create a simple box. So that would actually be something that has just one column and one row. And we also need to make sure to set the width. And we're going to specify 100%, which means that this box is actually going to be just as wide as the entire text column itself. One last thing that we need to do, and this is just for style points, we're going to click on Advanced. And we're actually going to set a background color. And this is going to help it stand out from the page a little bit more than it would if it just had a white background. So they've provided this real nice color picker for us. So just go ahead and click on that. And you can see you can pick the color of your choosing. We happen to like green, but you can choose any color you think is going to stand out. And it's important to think of this as more like the color of a post-it note. We actually want to make sure that this is a very light color. and what we want to make sure is that it stands out from the background but that it's not so dark or so bright or so rich that the text itself inside is hard to read. So again the color of a post-it note is probably a great place to start. We've picked this really nice minty green color here and all we need to do is click apply to save that change. You'll notice that up above here in the style area we actually have a new line of text that wasn't there before you can tell by reading it that this is actually the background color we just specified. So don't delete this because this is actually what the plugin has done for us automatically when we picked our color. All we need to do now is click on the insert button to insert this table into our blog post. 
You can see that it doesn't have any text inside of it right now, so it really just looks like kind of a ribbon. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paste our text back in here, or in your case, type your text in, since you might be doing it for the first time. And then let's scroll down just so we can get a good view of it again. Uh, just to make it look a little bit cleaner, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure to create a heading for this. And we want to actually change the size of this to make it stand out a bit more. Even though it's in a green box, I think it really helps to have a heading to sort of introduce what you're going to talk about. So we're going to choose our formatting options and pick Heading 2, which will make the text bolder and a little bit bigger as well. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this call to action has a link that's going to take visitors to the next page. So we just need to highlight our text. And once we've done that, we're going to click on the link icon in the visual editor. And we're going to enter the URL for a sales page that we've already created on the site. This sales page has a contact form inside of it, which we have talked about in another video. And this is where we're going to actually have people sign up for this free offer that we have. Once we've done that, all we need to do now is click on the add link button. And you can see that this has changed to a blue link color. We could, if we want, actually highlight it a bit and then choose bold just to make it stand out a tiny bit more. You could also add a button into this area if you want, and we've talked about a button in a previous video as well. Now, the next thing that we need to do here is we need to just highlight our text, and you can see it's all the way against the left-hand side of the box. So we're going to indent that just to make sure that it looks a little bit cleaner. So all we need to do is go up to the indent button of our visual editor, click it once, and that indents everything a little bit and you can see that it looks pretty nice. What's most important is that we actually update our page and take a look at it on the front end of the site where we will see the style is applied. Now that we see that our post is updated, let's go ahead and view the post. And when we scroll down, you can see that here we go, we have our call to action. Definitely stands out quite a bit better than the original text that was there before. And we hope that visually it makes it much more compelling as well, and hopefully someone will actually take this call to action. And of course, clicking on the Register Now button takes us to our Sign Up Now page, which we created earlier and has a contact form placed inside of it that allows someone to sign up for this free offer that we're making.